Good morning, sports fans! Have we got a slobber knocker for you? We don't. We don't. I just need to do some dev on uh, AJ. It's been like a month and a half. Uh, since we've done any. So we're getting back. I want to be your party people. Hi, party people. That goes it. Get the party streamers ready. Yeah, yeah. It's that time. Pop them. Pop them. So, this is where we got to last time, right? I basically can do this. Uh, quest. A fake battle. Which is what a quest is. Places the characters out. And then they will fight against each other. Uh, so they get put in the middle. Whoever lost gets killed and removed. Go against each other. And then they fill in the gaps. And this will keep going until one team remains. There we go. And it comes up in the top. Very tiny. The battle was won by team two. So we've got that. That is essentially a quest. We can use it for a raid. We can use it for kingdom versus kingdom battles as well. We can obviously make it look nicer. I just want to get a basic loop down. Because we are looking for MVP. So that's where we're at right now. Now in my notes. What we had next was choosing the amount of monsters. Weighted by the amount of viewers in chat. And then we need to send a result back to the server as well. Uh, there's also a, uh, normally there's like a prize for the winner. Uh, so whoever's on the winning team, if it's, uh, uh, well, if it's the, if it's a quest when you're against monsters, then it would be only something happens if, well, actually, no, I guess there'd be a prize for the winning team if the players won, the adventurers won, but if the Monsters won, the kingdom that was being attacked would lose their fame. That was the kind of mechanic, right? But if it was normal kingdom versus kingdom or a raid, then that wouldn't be quite the same uh, result. So we might need to consider that we have different types of events that look similar, maybe? Or maybe we do the logic in-game to handle that. I'm not 100%. All my tags are lowercase. It changes them to lowercase, doesn't it? And it gets rid of any spaces and... I don't know why I, I kind of liked the tags before, but they changed the tags, so whatever. Okay, well, I mean, it'll still come up if you search for it. If you're already here, then the tags don't matter. That's what I say. <laughs> to pay enough money. That could be a case. Maybe I didn't. Lowercase gang, yeah, the Oak gang. Oak gang would have been a good team name as well, Spacey. The only downside to it is I don't know if Braino actually cares for Oat products. I feel it wouldn't have been a true representation of him. He's always talking about uh, cat frogs, though. Oh, we can't get him stopping talking about cat frogs. <laughs> well, we need to talk to him about that and find out if that's the case. Okay, so... Uh, let's try and figure out then. So choose the amount of monsters. Let's get into the code. So we've got a uh, start battle. Let's look at the two places where this comes up in the code. One is from debug. We know that. And then we have start quest battle debug. And then we have start new quest. We have a to do to combine it to the debug function that's okay and then we have the definition of the function itself what's this am i gonna regret this oh cat dog i remember this bye bye <laughs> Bye-bye. So the amount, so at the moment we have generate new quests. Uh, let's have a look at this. This makes a new quest and it basically turns it's a random kingdom. That bit can stay. That's not a problem. It gets a random theme. Number of monsters. So this needs to be uh, provided.
I think, right? So uh, we need to do an API call. I'm trying to remember where we do our API calls. Um, we don't have API. Do we have like request? I literally can't remember. I think it's in like AHA subsystem or something like that. Let's look in our, I did look in our current project. Oh, socket IO counts as ours, I guess. Because we, uh, Imported that library. Okay, the subsystem here. How you doing, Cody Beard? Nice to see you. You have to uh, work now. Oh dear. Tragic. Have fun working, partly atomic. I might, uh, I'm pl potentially playing uh, games from the Epic Mega Jam uh, on stream later this week. So I'll get yours played and my uh, my mates from work's game played. And maybe a couple of others if we've got time. So I'll give you a poke if I do that, mate. Oh dear, Spacey, I'm sorry to hear. At least you got nice pictures of herons to keep you going now, eh? Okay, so we, we've got functions we call to request user outfit, request user by name, request kingdom by name. So we've got a bunch of functions in here. And we've got a thing to listen to things back as well. Okay, so let's maybe look for how request user by name is used. Let's do a little search for this. Okay, so. We don't call it. <laughs> okay, bad example. Let's look for user outfit. Okay, do we use this? Yes. So within here, on Battlecry received, we request one there. And we create a lambda to call after it comes back, right? But this, these aren't static, right? I can't just call them from anywhere. So I feel like I need an object of that type. I can't remember how we were calling these. Okay, so we're calling this from inside this uh, subsystem at the moment. What else do we have? Don't we have a thing to like get the next user from the dungeon? Let's try and find that. Uh, dungeon. Start next dungeon, probably. Start dungeon run. There we go. Okay, let's go and have a look in here. Initialize the dungeon. We get a state. I think the state is probably via the dungeon state machine that we, uh, Don't we have uh, subclasses of that? I swear we do. Why is that not working for me? Hmm. Okay, they show up this way instead. So this will be set of dungeon state. Let's have a look in the enter function of this. Is this the thing that gets a member for us? Press new adventure and user info. Okay. Okay, so in our game instance, we can get one. So this is the sort of thing that we want to do. I think. The dungeon has a game instance in it. So let's uh, borrow this and see what we can do with it. So we were in our general game mode, generate new quest, right? 
thing is there where's this called because we we can't just go ahead and do the rest of it so i feel like when start new quest is called we actually need to call this we do something first so where is start new quest called in here okay cool so let's let's go ahead and do a request in here i guess instead uh it's gonna be a bit ugly if we do that so let's just do um get number of monsters for quest okay uh so if we go ahead and make this function now uh let's where should we whack it just down here we'll do uh and this will be one of these oh what did i call it again okay i like that uh but it also needs to return an integer right and then 32 and not have a semicolon at the end Uh, yeah, that's all good. And we tab this in. Okay, so now we are in the cache dungeon. We can just call get game instance, I guess. Well, I mean, actually. I wonder, uh, do we just. Okay. Well, I guess uh, this is fine. This is fine. Okay, this is where we start building up a request here then. So we have our AHA API uh, subsystem. We need to make up the relations. Right, key, this syntax I can't remember at all. Then we pass that in and we have a user delegate because that's what we were getting, I guess, right? Relations is like what data you want with it. I forgot how this works. Let's have a little look. Okay, you can. It has members dot with all. These are the different bits of data that you can what you would have back with it. So we don't actually need anything like that. I think instead, uh, Lampa told me earlier we have get stream viewers so let's just open this up over here I'm trying to figure out what this is so does this give us what does it gets the current viewers of the stream so it just gives you an array of st strings back i guess Okay, uh, here's our viewers. So I feel here we'd need to really strip out the the known uh, bots. Um, from this, because a lot of these are IRC connected rather than actually in the stream. But we, for now, I guess we can just keep it simple. Okay, so we have that viewers. Let's see. We know, well, we know it exists, but now to try and understand how we would go ahead and do that. I'm trying to see how this is all done here. So we request the next dungeon adventure. We've made a function in here. But what we want to do is set, uh, send dungeon end data. Yeah, we want to request. I guess we, yeah, we'll go back to maybe where we were here. Okay, so let's give ourselves some room. This will be a request. Uh, did I even go ahead and make that function? Got a feeling I didn't, did I? I just kind of wrote it here. Didn't actually do it. 
So we get rid of the namespace. Get that. Okay, so. And this might end up being called something like request. Uh, I don't know if it even needs to return an int, actually, because we're not returning from it. We're going to set off a trigger of things. So, yeah, there's a couple of things we're probably going to change with this. First, we'll rename it to kickoff uh, quest flow, maybe. And then we'll also make it void. Because it's going to do more than just what we said. So, first is going to be uh, find out number of chatters for uh, generating fair amount of monsters. So, what we did in here was we did a request next dungeon adventure. This is the thing that we're going to be changing or uh, creating something similar. So let's copy paste this for now and see what we need to do. So request next then. Uh, request current chatters. Chat list, let's call it, right? Okay, we've made ourselves a delegate in here and this is what comes back from it, right? Well, this is just going to be a bunch of strings, not AHA users. So I'm guessing... I don't think we've got any more... Uh, Delegates in here, have we? Just these. Okay. Oh, but these are in AHA user. Hmm. Where have we declared any more delegates? Okay, we got some directly in here. Uh, use a command, use a quantity. These are like requests that we make, I think. Okay, and we've got some in our kingdom. This doesn't seem relative to any of them, so it may end up going into this base one. Potentially, anyway. See how this user one what comes from here. So we've got this. Yeah, I'm kind of guessing this stuff. If I'm honest with you, on uh, several chatters. Does it take one parameter? I don't know. Of chatter names. Uh, it takes one parameter of the type. Uh, I don't even think it takes is the correct term. So let's take our theory of string. Let's give it a meaningful name then. User array delegate. Let's just call it chat array delegate then instead. Um, forget what the ret val wants. That means that they can return a value. Hmm. Okay, so we've now got this delegate, we can kind of go back to where we were. We're going to make a new one of those. Uh, actually, yeah, here. And create a lambda, I think, right? Use a delegate. Well, actually, yeah, just looking at this. 
This example I came across here, this one seems more... That's user array, right? Let me find all here how that one is used. Request all users, right? So do we then pass in a callback? Of what we want to do afterwards, I guess we would. Rather than doing it specifically in there. Okay. Oh, well, hang on, wait, we've got this already. Ah! Uh, okay, so I already did this function that I've been trying to build up. So we end up making a create URL users. So let's look at this. Is this Stream, no, it's viewers, you see. What's the difference between users? Maybe it's not the same thing. But then, hang on, didn't it really say that in the comment, though? All users in chat. Yeah, no, maybe it does give back uh, AHA users instead. We get the name and then we go ahead and To be honest, won't we need the users anyway? No, we won't because it depends on the how many of they need to sign up, right? Oh man, I'm looking it feels so far and looking at this code. Let's see. Does they even get the get relations? Do I don't even get the relations array? Are we setting anything in that array? Okay, target the user's endpoint. So we want to get all users. We bind a lambda. If the request is successful, we get a response code to 200. Then we've got these users. Where does this users come in? No, not yet. We haven't got it yet. We're getting content as string. This is the thing that will convert it into one of those. Okay, but we won't. There's a chance we're just getting the string uh, strings back instead. So we might need to make an array that just holds. Oh, mind you, we do another one here. Viewer request. This looks more like it. How you doing, Jerem? Nice to see you. Right, stream viewers endpoint. This is the one. Right, that we were just looking at. Yes, okay. So we then make ourselves a request. The endpoint is this. The relations, we're using the same one. Oh, the relations are passed in. That's why we do get relations there. Okay, okay.
Then what we do is we, what's the viewers request? Oh, this. So when it's done, we bind our call back. And if it was successful, we then read JSON read a factory create get content as strings, so similar to before. And then we have an object, we deserialize it into a JSON object, which is just a, a nested kind of structure of strings. And then it'll have a field called viewers, which is this thing here, like this. And then we pull that out. And we put them into a T array of JSON values. So for every within that one field, I think it's a T array of JSON value is just a generic thing, I guess. We want to go through and we want to get it as a string. And then we want to. That's finding the user there. So for us, we would just count the number of, I guess, here, right? So I think if we can just take this bit. Uh, request current chat a list. So the end point here, I copied in some of the other, but it would be stream viewers. So it wouldn't be a select though. Uh, let's just whack this in here and we'll try and work with it. Yeah, stream viewers, we can stick with that. We're making our request. Uh, we, relations has come in like this. Uh, but we need it to come in I guess it'd be this Don't get relations like that Uh, so then we start this request here. Yeah, that's all good. If we're successful. We go ahead and get the contents as a string. And we deserialize it into this JSON object, I guess. And we make sure that it's valid and that it has a field called viewers. If it does, then we have an array of it. And then we basically just want to, uh, I guess in, at this point we need in 32 number of viewers equals viewers array dot num probably. That means that we've, uh, we should have the number at that point. So this was all originally we are then have the call back. We need to do stuff too. So we don't need any of this. And then result. What was the result here? Okay, so. That's a uh, no. We didn't set one like that, or do we? So confused. No. Okay. Result was the array. Well, so we're just going to pass in a number instead. I think. Execute if bound. So we're going to have to create a lambda that takes in a number. Like that, I think. So if we go back to here, 
So then when we call execute if bound, does that mean that this lambda, this, whenever we call this, do we pass in a, a lambda that matches that signature? Doesn't look like it's used. Uh, yeah, I think this is what we looked at before. Okay, well, I mean, we use this one. Is it, we just want to see how they're called. I forgot how the syntax of this stuff works. Doesn't seem so. What about this one? This one I think we do call. Right, yeah, so we pass in a lambda. The lambda needs to, there you go. This is where we pass in the parameter, right? So we want to go ahead and do this, but we want to do it in our new kickoff quest flow. Oh yeah, we kind of have it down here. Oh, this, <laughs> I have to find the copy pasta that I've made earlier. To me copying it, that it makes no difference. Uh, okay, so what we do, we don't want to do request next engine. This is going to be request or uh, current chatter list, and then we're going to create. Is it called the chat array array de uh, chatter array delegate? Thought I called it that. I did. Okay, doesn't like it at the moment. All right, so we pass in this dungeon state. No, it's not being called from the dungeon state. So I guess this we could do an AHA game mode if we need to pass this in. We'll find out. We we'll pass in a weak API as well. That can stay the same. And then by here we need it to be a. This is where we pass in the number of chatters, I guess, right? So it'd be our tier A of F strings. No, it's just been int, sorry. So it'd work like this. And then all we need to do then is to do that, the next steps that we're in this kickoff dungeon thing. These. But now we can pass in a number. I mean, do we want to do some other still? Is Synapse active? Would probably be. Ah, uh, hold on. We generate a new quest here. Start new quest. Start new quest. That generates a new quest in here. Okay, so we, we should have already done this by now. So realistically, this should be done back here. And yeah, to be honest, we can, uh, no, because we don't want to do the signups of the quest yet. Because they don't know how many people uh, they'll be facing. Okay, this is an interesting one. Um, we basically want to generate a new quest here number of monsters is i think we do it all in here as well because we wanted it to work for debug we don't really need that if we had to do things properly so this function would probably become i guess kickoff quest flow is not too bad but when it's done, that's where we'd need to do this stuff. Maybe. So let's jump down to this. 
This is where the lambda would be, right? Okay, so first off, we'd need to assign, uh, do strong this current quest to assign that. Uh, we'll make a new quest, but we'd also need to pass in the number of monsters. That also means that we need to adjust this to take uh, int the, to number of uh, monsters. Like so. That might break some other usages of it, but for now we'll just crack on. Uh, hey Pizarro, good day to you. Hope you are keeping well. So this would also change to strong this of that. Press sign of clear, yeah, that as well. And this as well. So number of chatters is there, and then uncomplete, no, this is... I don't think that's what we need to do anymore. Now, do we need the API here? I guess we needed it because we were calling it... I don't know why we were passing in the API, actually. Looking at this, we're not actually making any further requests. So I don't think we actually need to pass in the API like that. This uh, needs to change to this. That's fine. Okay. So we go ahead and we ask for this. We get the numbers back then. That should carry on the flow. That's the idea at the moment. So we'll see if we what we get from that. I guess what we should hold on to to find out is chuck in a breakpoint here. And we'll get a hot reload going on this now. See if it actually works. Ah, I did not like that. It's probably other use of that generate new quest. Yeah. I mean, what did it used to do? Get quest uh, min monsters, get quest man, uh, max monsters. Yeah, that now needs to get a value passed into it if I think about it. What does it though? Uh, I think it should it would basically choose one based on the hmm. Start quest battle debug. So in here we're now gonna have to just choose a random amount, I guess. Mm. Let me just say that for now, which I don't particularly like. That means 10 will be passed in. And now that we've got these, we don't quite want to choose a random between min and max. We want to choose... I guess we could do F... Uh, we could do a random range between... Number of monsters minus um, quest monster variance. Uh, 
let's just call it uh, monster to view, uh, ch chatter. Oh, damn it. Uh, it could be a ratio as well. Hmm. So let's say if there's 10 viewers, then we want to do five monsters, for example, right? So we get that value and then we want to do equals that times this. Let's rename this to ratio instead of variance. Desired monster to chatter ratio. So we do it to that, but then we need to I mean it means there'll always be a static amount of person chatters, but the, you, you know what it's fine for now. We just want to do a, a clamp and we want to make sure that that we, we want the whole result to be uh, cast to an int. We're going to clamp it to the min and the max. Okay. Good. This can probably be exposed at some point. Okay. Um, right, so this should give us a number now, uh, and that leads to the problem that we had back here, which was uh, generate new quest, not taking in a number like here. Yeah, so we now need to make sure we pass them in. So we've got 10 on that one. And I'll generate new quest there, that's fine. Right here, start new quest. We should already have, right, we shouldn't have to do this. Our current quest info, we should already have numbers. So we can get rid of that now, I think, right? Yeah, I'm almost certain we can. This is the debug one. This is pretty much the same, right? Just that there's a comment there. Get rid of this. Okay, that should compile at least now. Wishfully. Okay, so now it doesn't... Request current chat list. Is there? What, what was it complaining about? It's not a member. Did I not do it as a function? I have done it as a function.
Let's deal with this in the proper output log, I guess. I, I, we have made this function though. Is it because this doesn't know about the API in here? Is that the include for that? See what happens. Okay, it's still saying it. Is it because of the the type of lambda? Yeah, it is. It's the signature. I need this signature. Current chat as list of a chat array call back instead. Uh, we also need to apply that in the. Oh, did I not make it in the? Hmm. Hmm. That would be problematic if I didn't do this. That's so why I can't find it. Cheeky divider missing here as well. We'll get that in. Okay, here, avoid. Ah, it's because we don't have a semicolon by there. Our generate new quest is actually a member of this, but we need to call it on this, I think, right? Yeah. Ah, same with these actually. These are members, right? Oh no no no, don't do that. Ah it's current time. Actually comes from this. Current time. I guess we will need to pass in current time to this start new quest. Damn it. Okay, so this comes in. We now have a current time that we can deal with. We then need to pass the current time. Ah, hold on. No, we don't need it in that, we need it in this. Uh, where was the other class? Oh, I lost already. Here. Okay, whack that in there instead. Trans flow to current time. Let's pass that into here. Okay. So now we've got that current time coming in. We need to pass that in uh, to scope with this as well. Time, not type. Um, so we should have access to this. It's not, it's not an object, so we don't have to pass it in in any safer way. Quest duration sign up is a member, so because of that, we need to access it via the strong 
uh, points that we've got. Number of chatters was passed in via the, the callback. Okay, that looks better. Let's see what we get out of this, shall we? Uh, I mean, it should take no arguments. Did I not save the... Oh, I didn't get rid of it from here, it seems. That's my mistake. Uh, nothing like knocking the any wind you have in your sails other than compiling a CPP project. Okay, users isn't found, so request can check. Okay, by here. Oh, is this where we try and call it? Let's see, we hang on, hold on, hold on. So this is our chatter's request. Yes, this should maybe be. You rename to current viewer list. Chat array. Uh, did I make this? I think I did, so we, can, we probably need to rename that as well. Although, didn't we already have one that we pass in? Oh, this stuff is so confusing. Mm. By here we did one, right? Where we got we just made this What's the point of this? This delegate callback. I I guess that's just what you do at the end of it, right? Once it's all done. Hey, glad to hear Cody Beard. Look after that pretty face of yours. So we have these callbacks. Do we actually do anything with them? No, it's called callback, isn't it? So it'd be in here. So the callback goes into there. So that we can call the callback at the end of it. Okay, that all make that makes sense now, sorry. So when we've got this, the type of callback that we want was this, and this is wherever this will get called from, which will be, we're already doing that, right? And it needs to pass an integer back. So we have this callback, we pass the callback in, and then we execute the callback, passing the number of viewers. Okay, I remember now, kind of. Okay, now the users is something that we pass into this. I don't think users was from a previous function that we're no longer using. So that should be fine. The only thing we need to really look at here is I think I made this delegate. And so it'd be good if we could rename it to have the word viewer instead. Okay, so let's rename this. Oh, great. Why don't you let me rename chatter array delegate? Okay, this is just going to be viewer array delegate instead. And we'll just manually go through and replace these. There's one, there's two, and there's three. Okay. Um, 
let's give that a compile now that we got rid of the users. What's happening with your dynamic nav mesh coded beard? If you want to talk about it. Uh, no matching overload found. It should be one that takes an integer, right? Isn't that exactly what I made? I don't know why I can't like Alt-G on it as well. It's really irking me. HI subsystem it's in, so it should know what it is. Oh, error list open. Let's get rid of that. array string to oh is it because it, it returns an, an array so this doesn't take Oh, so annoying that it doesn't flip and jump you to there. Oh. No, but it does bring back the... Okay, okay, hold on, hold on. So this doesn't just bring back an int, so... We... It doesn't need to. Oh, actually, I've called this request current viewer list, so we shouldn't need to return the num... We just send the this across instead, but we need to put it as a string. Oh, I can't. I keep losing the point of where we're calling it and what needs it. It's so messy. Where are we calling this from? Kickoff quest flow, right? And what it's going to have coming back from it isn't going to be just the number of chatters now. Well, it shouldn't do because this is a viewer array. It should bring you back the the array uh, 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 though. So let's update this to be f string array like so. And then in here, we can just say that int32, come on, int32 number of viewers equals, let's just call this viewer array, number of viewers is that dot num, then we can use number of viewers in here. Okay, so because of that, we now need to change the type of our delegate and stuff, which is this that we can't click on. It's driving me crazy. Okay, it is the right type. It does return that. So then we need to look at where we call this now. This callback is expecting one of those. This bit here, we now need to pass in. Okay, so we need to turn this to an f string array. Okay, so we just paste that. Okay, if you're a string array, let's make that. No longer need that. And now we need to pass that into that, but we need to actually make it. So let's have a look how we did this before. And go back and we'll do something similar in here. So we're making a T array of 
view as a string instead. That's fine. We go over each one of these and we make the username. Just, just gets the username out and then we no longer need to look them up. So we can get rid of that. And now we can instantly just add it to be honest. So we should be able to say this dot add that. It doesn't seem a benefit in us breaking that down any further. Okay, that should give us the array then. We go through the array and we add uh, the string version of it into that and then we send it off. So, uh, you coded beard, you're saying the only way you could come up with a way to make pawns prefer a road over a non road was to use nav modifier areas, but can't attach those to the road itself. So, I have to work out a way to programmatically place them over the road, which wasn't. I see, okay. Um, yeah, there's a way that you can modify the score that it, re it returns. Isn't it like weights or something? But it might be via Navnesh modifier. It's one of those things that I've heard someone talk about rather than do myself. But I know on like some of the AI stuff in work, they've done it before where they, they make certain costs more, paths more costly um, in order to just kind of force things to go certain ways or to avoid certain things. But I can't, I don't know any more of the details, I'm afraid. Okay, no matching overload for the callback, which is, oh, no, no, I don't need this in here, that's why. I don't quite know what user request, process request was. Oh, is that the last thing that we need to do at the end? A view request process request like that I guess okay hello we're back uh, yeah enough modifiers you can change the cost which uh, cost which works sort of but you can't change their size it doesn't match the painted road okay as I found that modifiers are the only ones you can set the shape of directly I like not fire uh, nav modifier oh not via areas was a nav modifier can't be attached to actors directly. Hmm. So they can't like move with an actor, are you thinking? Uh Deadshot, you've asked me before. I I told you that I'd let you know if I, I would start doing play testing sessions again, so it's probably not gonna benefit you to keep asking me. Uh Nav Mont Folly. Okay, yeah, a similar thing at least, eh? Okay, uh, so we are at the point where we want to debug just to see whether what we did just works, right? So we wanted to uh, see what this is called. And then, we, yeah, we've already got a breakpoint in here, which is good. Okay, so let's give that a go. But the thing is, I don't think it's going to come in naturally. If I do like start game flow, I think we're, we're going to have this, uh, this stuff only happens. Hold on. Our quest enabled. Can I announce a new quest? Decide next game. Okay. Uh, what have I got to change to make this work? So quest enabled. Are they false? Okay, so that's going to instantly fail. That's point one of why it's not working. So quest enabled is set on our game mode. So let's jump into this. Uh, our quest enabled. Let's tick that. And then let's see what happens here. Right, so can I ask you quest is, is this active? And is the current time? Okay, so next quest announcement time is stored in HA game mode as well. So we need to really minimize that. 
guess. Or does that get set? Uh, let's have a little look, I guess. Oh no, yeah, uh, quest interval. This bit, so I guess this would just be a zero point. Let's just set a tiny, tiny. Uh, this can just be set to uh, a small amount of time for now. Okay, so how long has it been? Next quest announcement is 777 677. Okay, so that's one more afterwards, I guess. So it's going to return false from that, right? So it's not going to do that. It's not going to do that. It's going to try and do a dungeon run, but there's no dungeon, I'm pretty sure. Okay, so it should keep trying though, right? No, because nothing... Uh, okay, okay. Uh, let's uh, stop this for a sec. We need to just hack things to work a little bit at the moment. So, if this fails, we need to call the side uh, activity again. But, I don't know, it feels... Yeah, are we just going to get stuck in a recursive loop? Because uh, when it comes in... I guess the time will be increasing slowly, but we're in the same tick. This could cause a crash, couldn't it? Oh, I don't even think we um got reloaded. Still could cause a crash though. So that should fail. Uh, let's jump into this trigger breakpoint here. 7175 7075. Yeah, I don't see this progressing. Is this changing? No. I think it's because it's the same tick, the current time remains. Okay, so let's turn that off then and continue. And this is where we crash. Maybe. That's fine. That is fine. Okay, dokie. Um, I basically just want to wait without having to break stuff I've done already, just to just try and run the quests. I mean, we we could we could do it this way. Get rid of this. Go back to here. And do that if uh I'll try doing that but nothing will and then what we need is it to come back in next tick and try again. But it's not being called this way, is it? So I guess we could start a timer, maybe. Just to call it again in one second. Uh, retry, decide, next, oh, what's it called, this function? Decide, next, that's it, that's the one. Whack that in. Um... Side is that a U function? No, it might have to be now. Uh, we'll just try it in one second. Don't loop, don't delay. All right, let's give that a 
blast instead. That should hopefully uh, let us test the start bit. Yeah, it's pretty tricky getting back into this project always, but it's most important to try and keep some momentum going. It's just, yeah, with everything else going on, it's pretty hard to keep up the momentum. Um, feel better once you get to a point where you remember how the communication and everything works. It would just be a bit um, ropey until you get that, that to that point again. Okay, so if we open up our game mode again, because I'm not sure whether it all stuck. We did, so let's have a look in here. Yeah, that is correct. Should, if we just, the quest interval would be like every half a second. Because uh, we wait a second if it's not true. So we'll go ahead, we'll start the game. Going to flow, should be nothing. Okay, now it's gone off. It's got the re response. So our number of viewers, apparently there's 30, but I mean 20 of those are boss it bots. That's all good though. We're getting the data, that's what counts. Uh, I'm having that fun at work now. So many different projects I have to work on in tiny bursts. How to, yeah, it, it can be really, I, I don't know, it really like, it makes me want to stop. <laughs> uh, but I know I don't want to stop with the project. But in those moments, I'm just like, I'm not enjoying this. Why am I doing it? But it's, uh, it's I guess with devs, sometimes it's the longer term gains, right? you got to try and keep in mind. Thanks for sharing your experience, dude. So this then, current quest info will then go ahead and generate a quest, passing in the number of monsters. So we've got 30. It will now go ahead and use this. It'll times it by 0 0.5, and then it will clamp it by whatever our max monsters is. Max monsters is 12. Uh, and so there's our max amount. Then we can start up the quest. Okay, that looks like it works then, which is good. Although we have no one in here. Uh, what happened? <laughs> I mean, numerically it works. Is there something missing between the debug start quest? Uh, start quest sign up. Oh, maybe the sign ups have started. I didn't even think about that. Okay, we reset it. And we set a timer for this. Have I even done this properly? I think so. So quest enlistments. Do we add to this? Hang on. I added to do above it. Update the UI to show that they're open. That's fine. Okay. Um, these quest enlistments. Let's go ahead and find any ones of those. Yeah. So we, uh, let's see. Do we add them? All right. We'll try this again. Start game flow. We hit this because we're starting off. Now I say, I am interested in joining. Uh, okay, do I just type anything or have I got to go quest? Okay, hold on. Right there. There's currently no active quest going on. You swine. Is there not? Is that... Uh... That would be on the server, it says that. Uh, where's my output log? Oh, I moved it over here. I don't like it there. Let's go back here. Okay. Um... What was this? Try enlist quest character. Does this... Does this get called from... On enlistment command received. Right, how do these work? Uh... Okay, let's let's make our game mode have a longer quest signer because we're not even sure that that's working at the moment. 
I'll do this to get the game running. We should now have a quest sign up. We need some logs in here as well. Uh, start. Start uh, quest signups. Yeah, can we uh, log this? Uh, we can do this in here. Okay, and then in the enlistments. Try enlist for quest. Uh, uh, we can do a bit of log in here as well. Attempting to enlist. Um, we're grabbing the username from uh, user dot name. Username. Like that. Do we have to put it in the text? Or I think it might work like that. Okay, and then if it fails or if it succeeds, we need to already enlisted. We already have things here. Hold on, where, where do we do this? Here. And then we, okay, we need to find where this is done then. We bind that to when we get one. Uh, we don't really do anything with the the return, do we? Uh, we ha we have this. We make a response, but then we return it. But I mean, when you're binding to it this way, that it doesn't return anything, does it? Um, like this. I don't think it actually returns anything of use, so we were probably in the right place to put some logs. Okay, let's give this a little compile, shall we? Uh, we can probably hot reload it, we haven't changed things too much. Uh, any uh, Cult of the Land fans as well, my wife Isha is currently playing it over on her stream. If you're interested in checking it out and joining her cult, uh, then I'll drop a link in the chat for you now. Okay, let's see what happens now then. So start game flow. Okay, quest signups are open, quest signups are closed. That's a problem. <laughs> okay, why do they instantly close? Glad to hear Spacey. Uh, let's have a look. Quest sign of duration. See, I feel that was set to a higher number. By me, it was set to 60. Hmm. Hmm. Let's see when this is banned and see what's going on with that. Gosh, go back, go back, go back. Sixty. Why is it instantly finishing then? Where did this come from? 
Yeah, I, I don't understand. I don't think we call this anywhere else. Let's just double check. Not fast enough in my zero seconds. You're right. No, we signed up to it there, but the time is 60. Why? Okay, it must be, are we setting this delegate wrong? No. We're not. This is 60. This is stupid. Um, we're going to just do the sanity check of not hot reloading. Really, that shouldn't be the case. The only thing I can think of is if we're not using that game mode, the blueprint one. But it says that the value is 60, though, and we just set a timer for 60, so why does it... Um... Where is it? So what is the, the set timer signature here? So this and a... Yeah, one of these two it is. Ah, first delay. First delay, if I'm passing in zero. Hang on, if less than zero, in rate will be used. So basically, my problem is I've used a zero delay for the first one, so it'll instantly do it. So that's me doing my timers incorrectly here. Because that's not the only one I've done in here. So let's get rid of this and let the default value handle that for us. And hot reload that. Okay, this time. Okay, we start this. Okay, quests are open. Let's see. I can't remember how we did the logic. So if I just talk, does that do anything? No. If I type in quest though. Okay, it does. Takes in the username. Uh oh. I have broke pointed on it. We've added it there. Okay, great. Let's get rid of these breakpoints and try that again. Thank you, Bizarro, for such appropriate quest commands. Uh, attempting to enlist, but it didn't succeed. If someone else wants to type it in, go ahead. With the correct spelling. Oh, no. Okay, so I guess you guys have to uh, register first. I forgot how you do that. Is, is there a help command? I can't even remember. Uh, I think you just have to... What is the command you need to do? <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, I feel like we don't need that first step. But still, um... What is the, the commands for... No! Damn you stream elements, you're not useful. Uh, try join, exclamation mark join. It might be that. Okay, okay. There we go. Now, um, it's too late for a quest, but um, you can join kingdoms in that. Uh-oh. I can't stop the game. It's crashed or I'm hit a breakpoint. Okay. Yeah, breakpoint, that's better than crashing. Stop there.
Okay, so let's try <laughs> skipping straight to the loot box. I see how it is. Let's start the game flow. Uh, let's sign up for the quest. Okay, honest damn bot. Says success. Great. Desario's on the quest with me too. And this is nice. We've got 60 seconds of this. And then we will just see... We should probably break point what happens when this finished. Can announce new quest. And then... Uh, is it this? Our quest enabled is quest sign. Ah, uh, do you know what? I think I've done things backwards. Maybe. Uh, thank you for helping me test, by the way. Sorry that it's resulted in um, things breaking. Okay, let me. I need to get my head around this logic quickly. Um. So, a, a new quest is ready to be announced. Signups were open. Time elapsed. Time to begin the quest. I've done this kickoff quest flow. So, this is the thing when we're ready. It goes and gets number of monsters. So, it can generate a quest. Once we've got that, uh, it also, sorry, starts the quest signups. The quest signups resets our list and sets up a timer for when the quest signups are over. So, now in this time... We also set is quest signups active to true. So how is that then used? So in this next one, our quests enabled and the quest signups active and is the current time greater than the quest signup close time? Didn't we just set a timer though? No, we didn't. I, well, actually, no, yes, yeah, that quest signups we do. We do set a timer in here. Is quest signups active false? So I think we've got two conflicting bits of logic here. That is what testing is for. A great comment. Thank you, sir. So why have I got two different ways to do it? One was having a... Saying the signups are over and the other is done in our kind of state machine win a bit here. So I don't think we need to set that time timer. We just, well, we do. We do need to set that timer, but that time, I don't even know actually. What's the point of? Because the thing is, I worry it's going to go straight into... Wouldn't it then go and try and start a dungeon? Is my state machine a bit wrong here? So we just have this time. This time is purely set in here. It looks like I made a mistake and I just need to decide on which way I want to approach it. But I just want to make sure because I may have been thinking of something else. We, uh, we probably want to do this on a timer, so sign up stop after a countdown. Ah, uh, yeah, we're probably thinking that we wanted to display the time on the UI. So we probably, maybe that's why I got rid of this. So I think we don't need to do this. Let's just get rid of that for now. On quest sign of timer elapsed. This is no longer going to be called. Okay, what, do we set this to false anywhere else? Yes, in here. So quests are enabled, uh, quest signups are active, but then it will fail on that. 
I think this might need a... If uh, this isn't true. Actually, no, we want the dungeons to continue. Yeah, that's how this works. I forgot about that. Okay, so the dungeon would, would carry on, is the idea. And after each dungeon run, it calls back. But what we are currently doing... Uh, we want to do this again. This is just like, I guess... Uh, let's put a to-do in here. Uh, this is for debugging without a dungeon. Because, yeah, while the signups are on, you don't want to stop the dungeon runs, I remember now. Okay. So, in which case, what we want to do is to, yeah, we'll borrow this. And we also want to do that in this situation. If a dungeon run isn't active, then try that. Otherwise, We might want to do it down here. But I think it should just constantly fall back in there and do a second loop. We may not even need the second one, but let's just leave it in for now, just as a fail safe. Alright, so... This also means on quest, we don't need this anymore. And get rid of this. And then where's our main state machine thing? This. So start new quest. That one is where we start we actually start the new quest. Okay, good. So signups are closed at this point, right? Oh, yeah, that, that makes more sense to me to do it in that logic order. Okay, so this should then go through and start a battle. The monsters are going to be based on the enlistments. Oh, sorry, the adventures are. The monsters should be based on uh, the current number of monsters. Okay, this is looking healthier. Let's compile. i got a feeling we might be able to run this now. Okay, let's go. Let's give this another go. If anyone wants to help me on this, that would be appreciated. All you need to do is type in quest in chat. That should sign you up. And we'll see whether we go into a fight against um, potentially 12 monsters. Oh, you do join first, uh, Spacey. Uh, exclamation mark join and then you'll have to do exclamation mark kingdom and choose your kingdom. I think Mamba maybe reset the um, database uh, a while ago this is. Nice. Okay, she did it just in time. Received unknown WebSocket command. Okay, that's fine. Whatever. We're waiting for the thing that says signups are closed. I feel like it's been a minute. That's what I'm concerned about. Okay. Something went wrong trying to locate your kingdom. Oh, you spelled Dangladesh wrong. Okay, that's okay. Okay, so we're in our loop, are we? Sorry, it looks like it's messed up. Hmm. 
We're not hitting this anymore. Shouldn't have a dungeon, so we meant to do that again. Oh, why is it messed up? Also, yeah, the unknown WebSocket command on change. Let's just, just drop that in me and members chat for her to refer to in a future day. We've only got a quarter of an hour left today. Okay, so did we get our... Our game log. So it should have open somewhere in here. I thought we were going to have our first quest then. It made me sad. Closed. So what I don't like about this is I've got to then delete that in order to actually find it. Alright, understand games, Bizarro. Uh, help join. Join Danada. Oh, we're not reducing the timer. And we're not coming back into... Oh, yeah, yeah, okay, okay, okay. So, because we're no longer using a timer to do this, and we're just checking the, the time in the, in the loop, we need to reduce this per... on tick, I guess, right? So, current time... Actually, no, 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 we don't. We just need to call this again. Okay, so this would be... Imagine, I thought that's what this would do, though. I thought it would start it. This wouldn't be satisfied. And then it would come into here, I thought. Hey. Yeah, I'm not 100% what's going on with that. If it, uh... We don't need to reduce the time. It's not like an on-tick reduce the time. Because what we do is anytime we come into this, we get our time and we compare it to what should be the end of that period. I think the problem is right now we're not calling back into this. However, I expected that we would. So first off, it gets into here. Then it should get into there. And this should, I think this will just be our, it'll tick in. Uh, let's try this again. Let's set the game, uh, the timer a little bit lower. Even if it's just one me signing up, it doesn't matter for now. Oh, we figure out what's going on with this. So let's just check this on a uh, 15 second. Gives me time to type it in. Okay, it's going to try and start a dungeon run. That means it'll come back in a second. Here we go, we're back in. This time it's kicking off the flow. Okay. So now it doesn't... Okay, is that the problem? Is once we open it, we never kick back again. Yes. Okay. Okay, it's good that we've got a... Uh... So this kicks off. Oh, well, it, it will do after the time is finished, though, surely, right? No. No, it doesn't. No, that's one of the things that we changed. So in here, start cross signups. It now says, says they open, resets it. That's pretty much all it does. So now what we, we need a way for it to get back. So I think what we can do is we can just copy this. So we might I don't think it should go down into this. So I think we will 
just whack this up here instead. And again, it is debugging. But uh, uh, hold, uh, it's not just for debugging without a dungeon, though. We need to um, call uh, this function again. Right, well, the, the, the pro we could, I guess, call this again afterwards instead of doing it on a timer. Shouldn't call it. It's recursion, but it shouldn't go back into it. Well, it shouldn't. My problem is, won't it accident? Won't it go back in here again? Oh, if I really just botched up this state machine, let's turn off these. Okay, are we back or is it crashing? Okay, it's crashing. We love a good crash. Okay, so it didn't like recursively calling the side next game activity. Although I thought after it went into this once, that this would make a request. And when that request came back, it would decide the next game activity. Hmm. Yeah, let's stop this and go again. Sorry, chat. Not going as well as we hoped, but hey, I'm glad we're here doing something at least. Let's kick this back off. The words, the music are just turned on. Look at the name of this band. It's been censored by Unreal Engine. Crikey. I'm actually thank you, E5, for five minutes. <laughs> How did you try to move it? This is good, though. I didn't expect us to do this today, but we have to test the actual flow, right? So, okay, let's start the game flow. Sign up to open. Let's type quest. I should sign up, that's fine. And we're hoping. Okay, quest sign up to close. There's the monsters. Did they defeat me? They defeated me in the first moment. Is that just what happened? This is terrible. Okay. Is there. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, quest sign up to close. There's no one to fight against. They won for free that time. Okay, quest sign up to open. Now type it quickly. So there's not much of an announcement or a break. Just type quest. And you can join me on my on my battle against twelve monsters. There we go, there we are. We go into the fight. Okay, Cody Beard is still alive. Oh, he's felled by a werewolf. This is tragic. Absolutely tragic. Okay, uh, this is good. That was our first official quest, by the way. Congratulations, uh, Cody Beard and, and me for dying. Bizarro, you probably saved yourself a, a, a grisly death. So, uh, the problem there is there's no time between quests. There's no UI to say, hey, there's a quest starting. Uh, so a, a bunch of like that's why it's difficult to follow, but it works, which is good. So let me just do our scalar. I think I called it. No, um, 
Modifier. Modifier. No. Monster. This. This is ratio. Monster to chatter ratio. So we're going to expose this out. So that we can actually tweak some of these values then. So quests. Game flow, game flow, game flow. Isn't there stuff about the quest already? There's like times. Quest sign. Yeah, okay. This is just. Okay. I think we're going to have to whack this in here. We'll default this to 0 0.25. And this needs to change not to blueprint read only, but it needs to be more like this. Edit defaults only. Yes, because it's a game mode. You're not going to have an instance of that in the level. Okay. Uh, let's see if we get lucky with our hot reload. And after that, we need to find someone to raid. I might try and get another stream or two of this during the week. If I'm lucky. Uh, we'll see how I'm feeling. Tonight I was knackered, but I, I'm glad we, we got going. So, yeah, I don't think I can Thursday, but uh, tomorrow night, maybe, we can carry on. Okay. So if we open our game mode now, it may not work. Hot reloads are not great for changing members. Quests, desired chat ratio, okay, good. Uh, and then in our code, did we actually get rid of... Hmm, this is problematic, isn't it? <laughs> have to end there, a little hot reload again, should do the job. Okay, so that should give us less monsters. Uh, let's let's try to do one final quest to finish, shall we? So we'll say that there's uh, 10 seconds rest between each quest. We'll do a 30 second sign up duration. Um, and the, it, it currently thinks I have like 30 viewers, even though there's only 13 of us. So I'm changing that value down by 0.25%, which should give us around 7 to 8 monsters. Uh, it's, we're still going to be underdog, so maybe we'll take it down that little bit further to just 20% instead. Okay, so let's press play. Let's get the game flow going. Uh, and we should get our first one. Are they open? I can't tell if it's open. Okay, it's open. Sign up, sign up. Get your quest action here. Here we go, there's four of us. Around 10 seconds left to sign up. Just imagine there's a UI. Ooh. Wendell, oh, okay. First you've got to do exclamation mark join, then you've got to do kingdom. There's not enough time, I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry, Wendell, thanks for trying to join in though. Okay, so there we go. Here's the first quest. Can we do it? Ah, oh, we took out three of them. Ah, oh, honest Dan Games is, games is down. Pizarro still left. The zombie took them. It's basically versus zombie. Oh, and she did it. Ladies and gentlemen, we are the winners. The battle's won by team one. We would roll the dice. You'd get your loot. And now, a new quest begins. So you can do quest if you want to join us for the next one. Go ahead and type quest. Let's see what's going to happen on this next quest. We won our first quest. Congratulations. We'll remember that. Five of us this time. And who are we going to be facing? Could be dangerous. <laughs> Sparta! All right, let's go. Here we go. I'm just imagining it works. There we go. Okay, we're in. We're against the uh, the Halloween posse. Three versus three now. How's this going to go? It's two versus one. Bizarro and Spacey once again. Bizarro's dead. Is this a repeat? Is Spacey going to get the victory? This time she doesn't. The monsters win. Oh, my lords. 
This is tragic. All right, we have one decider. It's 1-1 one, one between the monsters. This is your last time to sign up. Let's do this. And then we will go and raid my beautiful wife. And we'll tell her how we quested. The first AHA2 quest has happened. Here we go. Who are we going to be facing? Is it the werewolves? No, it's the Halloween posse again. Here we go. Okay, it's a, not the great start. Bazarian and Spacey are left once again. Spacey against three. Can she do it? No. I was, I was ready to build that up and get dramatic, but the answer was far too quickly. No. All right, Monsters felt us this year. We'll try again in 2023, people. Good job. Good job. All right, if you want to join me on the raid to see Alicia Griffin and join the cult, feel free to do so. Uh, I will try and be back tomorrow. If I have a good day at work and I'm not too knackered at the end of the day, I, uh, we will carry on with this because what we need to do afterwards is send that information to the server so that it can register, hey, a dungeon's happened, here's the results. So be packaging up the information into a struct, sending it to the server so that it can make changes to our database, and then we can go back to dungeons and... and carry on that flow and we're, we're pretty close to the, the the very basic mvp then which is good so we'll see where we get tomorrow if i get my uh my streaming on thanks for helping me uh test it and uh helping to test